Okay, so it looks like we are recording now. So this is now the September 2018 community call for development community call for share. Uh, Cam just volunteered to be the note taker. So we're just rolling on through. Folks are filling in as being here on the call. Uh, so today, uh, I think we have kind of this draft agenda go over it really, really fast. I'm looking through the list. I don't see anyone new on the call. Is that correct? Okay. So uh, looking at the action items from the last call. So we're looking at pulling together a list of GitHub issues for people to look at to start contributing. Uh, looking at the sources for share, I think. Is that what that is? Um, we did put out a survey for more use cases. And I have not looked at the data for that yet, so that may be something to follow up on. Um, and draft data model, that is something that is in progress. Um, but really, kind of based on some of the comments from the last time, we were thinking that we could try to discuss what we think of as the minimum viable product so that everyone is kind of in agreement upon that for uh, the work we're doing here. Um, so th myself, Jeff, Cam, and Ryan compiled our assumptions in this document last week. So it seems like it would be good to review really quickly here. I think I already have it open. Yes. So if you look at page two and then on three, so at the very top of page two, it goes from kind of the general to the more specific. Um, so generally speaking, you're having a configurable editor for creating harvesting workflows with some predefined nodes there uh, with node red, a deployable server instance that takes flows configured in the editor to run them, persist them, collect the data to a backend data store. Uh, sources, we're assuming the MVP is harvested from the highest priority sources, not necessarily 100% of the current sources in share yet. Uh, so like looking to, like as we add, add them, to add them in order of the ones that are highest priority. Um, and then ability to replicate and share data between two instances of the share server. So I'll stop there, um, to, or that should be two or more, really. But I guess two, two is like the minimum viable product. <laughs> yeah. Any questions or comments on this so far? I see some things coming through in the chat. Let's see here. Uh, hi. Uh, so I was wondering if uh, all these tasks are like we can do it independently because uh, like for me, if I want to contribute, there are many discussions which I'm not part of, uh, which was to regarding the model and the schema. So unless the model and the schema are done, is there any or like if, while you are doing uh, the schema part, is there any part which we can pick and can we discuss some issues uh, like that? Yeah. So that's actually a you know like a a good. Um, thing that matches up with like one of our guesses on what we would need to talk about today where um, we had like what do we need to know or what like the barriers to contribute so that is then so one you indicated one that we had already talked about is, is trying to get like as, as it as it makes sense to get others plugged into some of the side conversations that that are happening um, but yeah, so, so, so say that again. So like, what were the other things? Uh, so my thing is, uh, uh, in the list of GitHub issues, can you point out some of the issues which we can pick up without being part of like the discussion which you guys have there, like, which you can do it independently, basically? Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, and I don't know that we actually have anything that is well-defined enough yet to qualify. Uh, let me pull up the... Link again, really quick here. Uh, 
so the the ones we have here are still pretty high level. Um, <laughs> an existing re so this is something that is more of a kind of administrative <coughs> task. So we're looking to have, or the the the, the proposal is to have the various repos as they are in GitHub spread out for the project, like in order to be able to pull those all together at once, have those be NPM packages that could then be loaded in that manner. So that's what we would started thinking about from kind of an installation process perspective. Um, so, so if someone was to say build a server, you know, like what would be the process for doing that? Um, so that's what, and, the, and then also like if someone wants to have a client, like how would they actually install and run their client? Like what would be the various things they would do if they're assuming that there would be different options um, for how that would be built or configured. Um, so while uh, this is under working, I wonder if it'd be a good idea for us to start looking at the uh, Lexit data. Well, not Lexit data, it's currently being collected. So is there a path to think about uh, moving the existing data collected to this platform? If there is, then uh, we probably can do it in parallel to think about to get data out of the current uh, um, share not file. Would that be a good idea? Yeah, so I, I think it, it is a good idea to take a look at how the data exists today. So that, yeah, so that's a good, that is a good task. Um, so let's go ahead and create that now. Existing data. New data model and tools are available. So, could Rick and, and Jeff help us to get access to those? Yes, yes, we can do that. So, yeah. Okay, and I don't know if Cam, if you're starting to capture that in the notes not here. I would do that right now. I was just watching along. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes. Because the it is it is assumed that well that I think that is actually like one of the questions of of. Uh, how useful it will be to migrate the existing data or just to recreate it. So I think that will be either way. Uh, this is a, that is a task that would feed into that. Um, it would be great to be able to take the data that we have and not have to reharvest that. Um, Some of the record might have been deleted or have been changed. Uh, so, uh, I think one value would be keep a historic uh, a snapshot of what we have. Right, 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 right. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, okay. So I didn't hear any um, disagreement with the primary objectives. Does that sound, did these sound right for the, I see nods. I'll try to scroll so I can see other nods. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so it so sounds like, yes. Yeah. So, so then the rest of this was really starting to get into, okay, to actually accomplish those objectives, what would be the technical requirements um, to do that? So looking at 
uh, or like the, the more granular things that would need to be done, uh, harvesting data collection, validation, having uh, JSON schemas that then could be used to validate against as data is coming in. Uh, the GUI for share red, which, you know, exists in some form already, obviously. Um, the raw storage. So like, so thinking that initially, uh, like MongoDB is one of the possible technologies there. I don't think that there has been like an absolute, this is what we're using decision. Um, is that correct, Jeff? Yes, no, it's okay. Yeah. yeah, so so this is really one just trying to get some some ideas down so, to start to test these to see how well these things might work. Um, and then kind of mapping, looking at the schemas and mapping file that starts a pipeline into raw storage. Uh, for the mapping, uh, we're thinking about having some JSON templates that uh, will define various methods, primitive methods that can be used to parse and take in data as it, as it comes. So like, you know, a great example is uh, a name value, maybe one com more composite value that has, you know, surname, given name, it's middle name, et cetera, et cetera. And we may want to parse that apart and, and, and map it to a particular structure. So, you know, having methods to kind of, to go to that, to, so we don't have to rewrite that every time um, and have that just be something to say, okay, as it's bringing this in, uh, apply this method and then spit out the appropriate uh, type of data, right? So that's, so, so thinking about how is we're map taking in all of these different values, like ideally, in, in many cases, it'll be just a value to value transfer, uh, but not in every case. Um, let's see, enhance process data source. So, so one thinking that there would be one raw data storage as it's coming in, but then also as it is processed, have that go to more, and this would be more the active data store, right? Uh, that would then feed into various tools, but wanting to maintain the raw data if that is of any value um, as it's coming from various sources. So, the, so then there, there's some other things in here, um, you know, looking at the sharing data between instances, you know, just some various questions. Uh, can someone ask for and retrieve data from me? Can someone edit, update that data? I'm looking at my board since, uh, Jeff was actually here at Notre Dame yesterday, um, and we talked through a little bit of this. Um, but in terms of some of the aspects, uh, and Jeff, maybe you could talk about this a little bit more, uh, but like there's various questions that the nodes could ask of each other. Um, so saying like, can you give me certain records from archive, for example? And then there's certain things that we could do that says, well, also ask your peers what data they have. So like, so, so one doing more of a direct node inquiry. So like if Virginia Tech sent a, so the node sent a message to Notre Dame's node saying, what data do you have on this? Notre Dame could also send that out to other nodes as well as, as an inquiry. Um, so those are some of the things that are just starting to be talked about. Um, APIs, having some kind of API, obviously. Uh, and, and then kind of thinking about the, the MVP, that not just building the kind of the core infrastructure, but also looking to actually build, have a couple applied examples of using the data. So to make sure that we're, we're driving towards at least a couple of those. So, that, so that's what we have so far. As the as the MVP. How does how how does this seem? Okay, I assume silence is acceptance. 
Okay. All right. So um, let me go back to the agenda to make sure we're staying on track here. Uh, so then with that, so we started talking about some of the issues as well, and, and we did go through that. So, so maybe that is a good jumping up point. Um, Jeff talked about internode communication. Also wanted to mention, I know David, you said that you had to leave at, at uh, the top of the hour. Uh, did you have anything that you wanted to touch upon before you had to head out? Uh, yeah, probably not. That is uh, directly relevant to the agenda. No, I think I'm good. Okay. Okay. Rick, do you want to, do you want to go back to that question of what people need to know to contribute and what areas of interest they have? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's, yes, that, that, that would make sense to, to close the loop on that. That would be good. Yeah. So just, uh, even independent of the list that you saw, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff, uh, we're pushing on a variety of areas just to get things uh, kick started. Um, but, uh, Obviously, we would like more people involved as this is a community project, and we'd like to, you know, really foster that side of things. So, what is it that you need from us to get involved? Where are the points that you'd like to get involved? What can you contribute? Um, what areas do you think, even from stuff you've heard right now, do you think you potentially could contribute if you if you knew more about it? We heard a little bit of that earlier uh, with uh, transitioning some of the data, but. Um, for this new development, uh, that, that's, I think, where we're most interested in, in, in these questions. I, I would say I'd rather leave the architecting of the new project to you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. we, once you, the framework is there, uh, we can contribute to harvesting uh, bit by bit. That's the uh, nitty gritty implementation of that part. That's certainly something that we can contribute. Uh, but uh, at this moment, I don't think you want too many uh, uh, um, too many chefs in the in the kitchen in terms of architecting. Uh, I, I would I would say architecting probably is better left with one team instead of too many. Uh, I, I'd rather to uh, uh, I would, we would be interested to know how you architect, architecting it, but uh, we'd rather not stand in your way. W would that be a good idea? I wonder. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that comment's appreciated, and I understand where you're coming from. Uh, but that does leave, um, you know, this harvester side of things. Uh, for example, uh, we, we think that Node-RED uh, and what we're developing with ShareRED is going to be a, a useful um, environment and framework for harvesting. And so, you know, one thing uh, we could use some help with uh, would be trying to write some harvesters, having other people other than us write harvesters, play with the framework. Um, so that would be one area where then we could still be working on getting that framework built up, getting the, the pieces put together. And then yeah, I, think we can, I think we can do that. Yeah, right? So yes. I believe uh, the main hurdle uh, is the schema right now. Uh, that's the starting point for anything I want to pick up from the issues, I think. Uh, even if it goes for API or the front end or say a harvester, knowing the schema is the starting point. So uh, if we can have that as uh, like, you can share with us like what is the progress and uh, is it done or like not. You know, think, what, what, we're, what we're doing is uh, thinking about this a little differently than the past share uh, uh, work. And, and how we're thinking about this is this sort of, uh, um, I don't want to say objects of record and I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to put too much emphasis on the truth of these items, but harvesters, um, the raw data that comes from a harvester is interesting in many ways before it's mapped to another schema. Uh, and so, uh, and, and what that, what that allows is for some common discussion on uh, what that entity should be. Uh, we can, we can uh, more strongly identify that uh, and then access that data in, in a somewhat less um, dynamic way. And so what, we're, what, we've, what we've been thinking is uh, we will generate a set of schemas uh, uh, in JSON schema format for each harvester. And so what that defines is sort of the, the truth from that harvester. And that gives us then a way to, to talk about that between groups 
independent of how you map that data to another schema. And okay. so, for example, you can maybe uh, Cam or Ryan can post in a link to to a few of the har- to the a few of the harvesters we've written schemas for. Um, uh, and what this does is then allow for validation. So even even ignoring any of the uh, uh, the identif- identifiability of that data, uh, it allows us to validate the API to make sure the API is not changing uh, while we collect more and more data and try to do this mapping. Uh, so you can think of these as validators if you want to ignore uh, some of those other characteristics. Uh, and the, the the link is now in the chat. And I encourage you to take a look at that those those repos and, and the, the files that are in there. It's it's early work, obviously. Um, but if we do that, then if we write a harvester, what we're trying to really do is get as raw of data as possible into just into some format. And we'll be working on that very soon. Um, uh, basically, right now, a good exercise would be: can we write Node Red? Uh, uh, workflows that then can be validated against the schemas that you see here. And again, they are, they are supposed to be very direct mappings to exactly what is in that data. Um, and if we can do that and, and we enjoy that process and that process seems like it's, it's a useful way to work, then we could be doing the mapping exercises, the second step. And that's the piece I think you're, you're referring to with the schema and that, that part Rick is actively working on right now. Uh, thinking about the schemas for um, some of these use cases, uh, in particular the the research um, uh, data dashboard style um, uh, work or, or, or research output dashboard. Um, uh, but until then, we still ha- we still can harvest this raw data and maintain it in its raw format, which will have some benefits as we think about decentralizing um, uh, storage and, and whatnot. So I think what you're getting at is like you want to see as many harvesters as possible to f- then finally go for the schema. Like you want to see all the raw uh, input format which will be available to you beforehand. Is that the crux of it? Yeah, I mean, we don't need as many as, as possible, certainly. Um, but having a few, especially written by other people, will help us really understand is this, you know, we're, we're trying to do a few things with, with the harvesting. So... Um, uh, if we're, if we're use case focused, um, which is the actual products that use the shared data, um, not everyone's going to be interested in the same harvesters. Um, uh, it won't make sense for one group, uh, to have, you know, thousands of harvesters that they actively make them. Uh, and, and, and that's, there's, it's not sustainable. It's not, um, uh, it doesn't make sense practically in, in many cases. Um, but what, what we could have is, is, you know, several groups maintaining uh, a few harvesters each uh, or, or many, many groups maintaining many harvesters each. Uh, and what that would mean is, is simply maintaining the schema and the um, uh, way of getting that data. Now, now once that happens, uh, so the, the, other, the other side of this is if we're thinking about many people being involved in this data collection effort, this harvesting, which is non-trivial, by the way, uh, maintaining all of those harvesters uh, at COS, um, uh, it took a lot of just silly manual time fixing bugs as, as people's APIs changed and stuff. There was a lot of time involved that went into that that was actually not on fun, novel work of using the data, but on just matching these things. And so if we can have the experts, the local experts, the people who really care about those harvesters keeping up with that, you know, I think it'll be a more scalable approach. Now we need to lower the barrier of entry then to writing harvesters if this is a vision that we want to see uh, implemented. And we think that Node Red offers that accessibility to uh, writing these harvesters without being necessarily experts at, at coding and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, web scraping and APIs and all of this. And so thinking about that aspect of it, trying to, to really lower the barrier to entry, make that more inclusive, bring more diversity to that process, uh, you know, what are the components, for example, in Node-RED that we need to make it really easy to extract these things, to, to do this stuff? Well, we need, for example, uh, an OAI harvester. We shouldn't have people just, you know, parsing raw XML from an OAI feed. We should have an OAI harvester 
that takes in the, the, the sets of, of, of information you want and, and blacklist the ones that you don't and does all of that uh, parsing um, uh, somewhat automatically. Now that would lower the barrier entry to write an OAI harvester. Uh, we might need a regex uh, 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 node. We might need a, you know, a, just a glob so you can use wildcard formats. Maybe that's a little easier for most people than re regular expressions. Um, and some of those are already built by the node red community. We have a lot of these accessible to us, but we need to know which ones we need more and which ones we would lower the barrier to entry to. And so having multiple people test this and try this, I think will give us an idea about how inclusive we can make this project. Um, it would be great if, if uh, people learning how to uh, deal with APIs or uh, learning how to write JavaScript um, or harvesters or scrapers could use this as a, as a way to get started. And then we'd have contribution from a lot of different people, uh, a lot of stakeholders, um, without the need to have then, you know, this core set of, of developers actively maintaining every one of these harvesters. And if we think of the only really route of transformation uh, being the, um, the, you know, getting the, the raw data, then those people don't even need to worry about trying to do the mapping and transformation, which is a whole nother set of, of uh, problems that, that we can work on making easier uh, in, a, in, a, in this mapping layer. And so I think that that's how we how we've tried to parse this of thinking about what is the what is the uh, uh, not uh, what is the most uh, direct way of getting contribution at that initial stage that that allows one to focus really on on the the core aspect of that API uh, of that source API and that is purely validating that the API is the same and getting that data into a raw format as easily as possible. And we think Node-RED offers some, some benefits there. So that's, the, that's the sort of the core of the vision and the, the, the philosophy that we're trying to maintain of inclusivity and, and lowering barrier entry and, and, and bringing more people into this, this uh, area of, 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 of research. I, I understand. I think we can contribute on that part. Uh, I wonder, uh, could we start uh, some tickets? And yeah, uh, starting from the tickets, and then we can pick and choose from there. Yeah, uh, make a list of all the resources we want to harvest from. Yep. And uh, get a priority list. So yep. uh, that that's when uh, I mean, uh, uh, if there is a um, uh, uh, concrete task that we can take on, then we can pick it on one by one. Yeah. What we'll, what we'll do is, um, I yeah. Well. <laughs> Rick is writing a, a ticket for this as we speak. So yep. we will generate this list, but I think what would be good for people who want to test this side of things, yep. and again, the more people, the better. Uh, and I don't think you have to have uh, JavaScript programming skills to do so. Um, I, uh, and, and if you don't, and if you do have to, we can also help you uh, sort of build those skills. Um, I think we should maybe do a, another call at some point just to have um, uh, maybe uh, Ryan and Cam uh, walk through what they've done, uh, and then uh, we can we can maybe even do one of one of the harvesters as an exercise uh, for people to see how we're thinking about this. And then you can you can get a feel for whether you think we're hitting the mark in terms of is this really easier uh, than writing code, or or are we just uh, fooling ourselves? Okay, actually, that that call would be great if you can have that call. Okay, so okay. Rick, let's, let's uh, get see if we can get that scheduled. So if you're if you're interested in this side of things, why don't why don't you uh, put your name down uh, uh, somewhere here, uh, and we will uh, make sure to uh, send out an email and, and get a call scheduled um, as soon as possible. Okay, I'll put in the notes. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, and really, I welcome anybody else here uh, to to do that. I think this would be a useful. Um, uh, again, the more people, the better here um, with a variety of backgrounds uh, to, to uh, try this and play with the system. If we're, if we're off on this flow style, this visual style programming, we should, we should know about that before we commit too much to um, this as a method for uh, creating harvesters. Maybe there's some other uh, paradigms that we could look at before we, we do too much to commit to it. Uh, I have one other question. I think in one of our previous meetings, someone put in a note saying uh, there is a different project that has already harvesting almost every uh, repository from OpenCore. Can we use that as the source? 
Yeah, so uh, if obviously if there's data that's already being harvested into a, a useful um, uh, uh, format, we can, we can certainly create uh, harvesters for that. Uh, there were some issues, I believe, with Open Core in the past, and that the license um, uh, to that that or the use of not license, the use of that API was, uh, um, and I believe it was Open Core. Uh, you, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Uh, um, well, we're recording this to video, but. Uh, uh, I'll need to look into this, but uh, I, I believe in the past this was a uh, a resource who uh, required non-commercial use um, for the API, and that works with most use cases. But because we're combining that, some groups are going to be combining that with commercial data. Uh, mm -hmm. There were there were just some amb ambiguities around the uh, uh, use of that API. So we would just need to make sure that um, if you get that data and you make it available, then you'd have to make it available under a, this, this was the issue. You'd have to make it under available, you have to make the data un, available under a, also a non-commercial use clause. Uh, and for many people, they wanted anybody to be able to use this data. And so if we introduce that data into the corpus, then we have to somehow mark that as only available for non-commercial use. Um, I, and that doesn't, that hasn't in the past uh, uh, fit well with, with the objectives of the stakeholders, but, um, given that we do want this to be uh, used by many people and whatnot, but um, we can certainly look into that. We should look into if, if I'm even right. If Core was the the uh, uh, group, and then um, if we can, yeah, we should we should harvest from from anyone that has good data. Okay, I see it. Uh, it's in our use case. Uh, someone's uh, put in uh, UW guys put in an item called integrate unpay wall. That unpay wall thing uh, has already harvesting huge amount of stuff from the uh, open core. So I wonder yeah. if we can use that as the source. Yeah, on, and on paywall, uh, I, 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 I spoke to them about this issue in the past, and I'm, I'm not sure where they landed on it. I don't think they ever got um, uh, confirmation that they could use it for non-commercial purposes. So I think they may have just ignored that clause, or, or I, they're, they're, maybe not ignored it, but uh, maybe they believe there are reasons that it, it wasn't, um, uh, it was irrelevant, um, but but uh, I, I do want to respect their terms of use. Um, if if there are uh, uh, restrictions upon the data, I, I don't want to just uh, violate that um, uh, uh, without without having some way to pass that information on. But on paywall was also trying to, I believe, harvest data without Open Core because of this issue. So uh, they may uh, be harvesting their own data as an alternative to open core. I think that was the plan was to write harvesters um, that didn't use open core because of this issue. So um, we, we would have to bring on uh, the open paywall folks to, to, to check or someone had to contact them. But um, yeah, we can, we can certainly look at that as a source as well. Is, is, there, is there a consideration in the implementation to sort out the licensing Mass. I mean, it's it's very complicated issue. Um, just because data are there uh, that's available that we can grab um, does not necessarily mean we can uh, put the data as an out output. So I wonder, um, do do we do we set ourselves to deal with the licensing issue? We can we can possibly just ignore this whole thing. Uh, people use at, at, at their own risk. Yeah, well, I, we certainly could take a more liberal perspective, and a lot of people have encouraged that in the past, given that they, they believe the, the some of these things are, are not, um, they, they can't be upheld in, in for any, any sort of uh, legal consequences. Um, we really do want to stay away from licensing metadata, certainly. That's, we'll set a bad precedent uh, in the community. This, this, these data are facts and they should be thought of that way. The problem is that, you know, like the, if, if you would, and again, because I'm not positive, I won't use that as an example, but um, let's say I have some data that I make available under, uh, so that my API you can only use for non-commercial purposes, for example. Um, well, so the data isn't technically licensed non-commercially because you can't license facts. 
uh, facts are, are facts and they, they, they uh, by definition cannot be licensed. Um, uh, but the use of my API, I could have, a, have non-commercial uh, uh, terms for that. Now, uh, uh, there's a question of whether that can be upheld in court, uh, at least in U.S. jurisdictions. Uh, uh, but, but just being, being respectful to the API, you may say, well, I want to respect the fact that those are the terms, and therefore um, I want to then pass those terms along, the use of this block of data, because I accessed it under those terms, should now be, should now be non-commercial. Uh, the license really they're facts. And so now that they're open, they're open, but are we respecting that, that original source's intention with that, the collection and really access to that data? No, not really. And so uh, it gets very, very complicated. Uh, I'm asking, yeah. Um, I, I, think, I, think, I think the best thing that we can do is try to, um, for the most part, if you plan to share these openly, uh, uh, collect data that is facts, that can be treated as facts and, and cannot be licensed is, is available to anyone. Now, we can segregate um, some of that data and, and actually annotate it with different um, terms. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, there are uh, stakeholders in the community that want to bring in data from Scopus or Web of Science. Now, that data, uh, again, uh, uh, it gets funny because these are facts that are being that are being um, pulled from the API but that would be <laughs> contracts of most of those groups it would violate the, the initial agreements that, that you sign when you purchase the Scopus API to, to then share those freely and so we may need then to either maintain that data as private um, uh, so that no one can access it or you may need to um, have some way to say well I know that Virginia Tech uh, buys Scopus, and so they'll be whitelisted, but any, no one else can access this unless we can confirm that they have purchased the Scopus API. Um, we, can, we can at least build the framework to allow for those things, um, but I, I, um, in terms of dealing with that, in terms of sharing, it'll be up to the, to the nodes themselves to make the call of whether they want to share that uh, freely or not. Uh, and I think that's, that's gonna be the, the part that we'll need to do a little bit of education on uh, but we'll, we'll allow for that in the framework for sure. Okay. It's very, very complicated. Um, this, this open core one is specifically complicated if it is the one because of the, because of the, the structuring of the terms of use. Um, we've tried to get in touch with them to, to ask these questions. Um, uh, we should look at Unpaywall's API because I believe they, they harvested their own data because of this uh, uh, explicitly, uh, so that would be the, the I think the thing to do. Sorry, do we do, just to understand? Do we mean core C O R E, or do we or is there another thing open core? I think we mean C O A R, right? C O A R, yes. C O A R, okay. Yeah, I think it's just I think it, I, don't, I don't even know if it's open core. I think it's just, it might just be core. Um, uh, it's a it's a it's a. But there's a thing called core, which is partly funded by GIST, which is. Right. Basically, sort of an aggregator for open access. Yeah, I don't think that's it. That's not it. Well, is it is it C O A R or C O R E? And then there is. I think it's C O A R. Uh, so, we're talking about open C -O -A -R. door. D O A R. Door. Yeah, door. Yes. Which is yeah. The, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, directly yeah. Uh, okay. Repositories. Okay. Sorry. Just okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So, okay. uh, too many OARs and OORs. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, good. Let's, let's <laughs> clear this up while we're while we're here, so that no one thinks. So, ignore everything we've said about core so far. Uh, open door. Open door. Yes. It's it's Correct. open door. Open D O A R. Yes, yeah. that's okay. right. The directory of open access repositories. Um, uh, core. And core and yeah, open so, core and open core are doing wonderful things. I'm sure I have no clue about their commercial use or not. Open door is what we've been talking about. Okay. Um, all right. Because I know, I mean, from working on open air, I know open air, um, or I'm fairly certain open air is sourcing data from open door. Um, yep. There's, I, yeah. I Sorry. think for the most part, people have been ignoring this, this non-commercial thing or just assuming that they are, because they're nonprofits, they are also non-commercial. But that, that's actually not, 
sort of incorrect way to look at it because we're passing this data on to other people. So we just need to look at what, in it, let's, let's just make this more general. With any data that we harvest, uh, if you want to be harvesting that data from your machines, uh, you need to do a few things. You need to look at if they do try to license the data, you need to look at the terms of use that they have, you need to look at whether they have a, a privacy policy, and whether they have a robots.txt file. Um, all three of these things are sort of critical to, or four of these things are critical to um, uh, understanding what you can and can't do with data. And so before anyone harvests anything, you should have a good understanding of, of, of those things. And those terms may, may include, um, uh, for example, you can only hit this API um, 100 times per hour or one time per hour or one time per day. And you can only make so many requests. And so you have to, you know, legally, you don't have to because some of these things have not been tr tried and, and, and whatnot. And we don't know if there's legal consequences or not. But out of respect for that, that source, uh, and probably out of respect for the, your lawyers on campus and whatnot, you should, you should probably think about those things before you make that call. Um, now, most of these groups, they want you to use their data. They want you to use their APIs. There's not going to be any problems whatsoever. Um, uh, but uh, those are, the, those are the, the things you should take a look at before harvesting. And I, I can help you understand some of those things. Obviously, I'm not a lawyer. You need to talk to your lawyers if you're going to be doing any of this stuff. Uh, but I can at least tell you where to look to find this stuff. Most of the groups, they're fine. Um, uh, and, and you can always email the group as well and ask for specific access for your use case. So that's the other, other uh, thing that even if you find an, an ambiguous clause, you can email. We had a problem getting uh, a hold of anybody at Open Door uh, back at COS. Uh, uh, I think Open Paywall had, had uh, or Unpaywall had uh, some issues uh, getting in touch with, with someone. So um, uh, we may just need to try again uh, if, we, if we do want to use uh, Open Door, D O A R. It looks like they've also released a version two, which may not have um, this non commercial uh, clause in it. So okay. put your name down if you want to be part of a harvesting uh, call uh, and, and uh, uh, we can do that at least the technical side of that. We can choose some uh, benign repositories to draw from uh, and then we can deal with some of these issues later on. Um, uh, and maybe, maybe that can be something we, we try to get a group together to document a, a how-to guide or a, a um, recommended practices, best practices when, when it comes to harvesting data. Okay. So I am wondering if we should move the internet communication to a future call. Uh, just because it feels like we had a good absolutely i think I think uh, uh, we can we can focus on this initial step of harvesting uh, get people into that pipeline, and then we can talk about that at, a, at another call okay. But yeah, but just to kind of review, I think there was at least one action item that's not in the list yet. Uh, let's see here. Let me go to the, because I was starting to create some of the GitHub issues there. Okay, so one is we have this generating list of desired harvesters to feed into into those so like what are the make this more specific uh desired high priority harvesters oh come on now what i have to thanks to make me want to comment oh it's up here there we go <laughs> So I, I uh, if you want to, if you want to dig into to some of the to, the licensing issue, just see the complexity. I'm going to link a few things here with Open Door as an example. 
now that we've confirmed that that one is. So if you look at that link, um, you'll see explicitly that they uh, uh, license, which is a problem to begin with, I think, uh, from a metadata standpoint, for reuse under a Creative Commons non-commercial share-alike attribution license, uh, which attribute the attribution aspect is actually also um, uh, uh, problematic when it comes to thinking about machine learning, AI, um, aggregate use cases where uh, if you use that information to say generate a, a, a training set that you then did something with, uh, you'd have to then find a way to uh, uh, attribute every um, uh, every piece of data that you uh, used. Um, uh, and then, if, but if you are using stochastic algorithms or um, you know a very large corpus of data, that attribution can actually be impossible or uh, uh, practically very, very difficult. So there's some, there's some issues just there to begin with. Now that, that page links to version two and the version two, um, uh, API page, uh, says nothing about, um, terms of use. So that, that mm. I see as we're looking. So, um, hopefully they've moved on to a more, uh, facts based, uh, uh, use of their data. Um, but, uh, this is, this is where things got uh, very complex and we had, uh, many discussions about um, uh, licensing and, and the legal uh, side of, of metadata and whatnot. Okay, um, sorry, just, just to jump in, just because obviously this is a JISC service, um, if you need, and I'm from JISC, even though I'm not overly familiar with Open Door, but um, obviously I can help sort of facilitate finding the right kind of people. That would be that would be excellent. Uh, and I didn't, I, I didn't know... Uh, I guess I, I wasn't, uh, in the past, I didn't know that it was a JISC service. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> yeah it's, it's not been heavily branded, yeah. Yeah, now, now it's very clear uh, in the version two that it's JISC, and so I would have, I would have uh, uh, emailed different people uh, in the past when I didn't think of a response. But yeah, Leo, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we might uh, need to, to get in touch then and have you put us in contact with someone uh, yeah. in the project. That yeah. would be good. Yeah, and I'm happy to help with that, obviously. Actually, why don't we do that? Um, uh, Open Door has always been one that, that we thought would be highly useful. Um, I, I, and because, because there was that more conservative license around the data, and now there's not, I think it'd be smart for us to, to go ahead and confirm what, what the, mm -hmm. the term is used for. And so if you can find someone at, uh, yeah. uh, that, would, that would know or can talk to us about this, that would, that would probably be a, a good thing just to go ahead and do. Yep. Okay. okay right. I'll, I'll follow up with that and uh, CC you, and then yeah, that'd be great. Uh, you have my email address. Um, what, uh, why don't we let me find the doc? I'll, I'll put I'll drop or Cam or Ryan if you have the doc open. Put my email in next to. Oh, here we go. I think I got it. Wait, uh, so at the yeah. top, I'll I'll put it in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. Very good. Thanks. Thanks, Leo. I appreciate that. That's good. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, here's the more complete notes. Let's see, um, yeah. So, so thinking about what's left to tie up for this call. Um, so we've got one scheduling the call to walk through harvester and like just quick question like um, when should we target uh, you think maybe, well, let's see, we could try to add one call in between this one and the next one, or we could try to shoot for more like a week from now. Um, any opinions there? Let's do a total poll where you have the list of names. Okay. So yeah. Next week, that, that should be fine. But it's a specific time that might have uh, issues. Students have their uh, class times that cannot be shifted. Okay. Okay. That works. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but it'll look like sometime within the next two weeks, I would say. Or, or, or two weeks out from now. Like somewhere within that time frame. Let's see, anything else for today? 
feel like we're edging closer and closer to expanding the contributor pool. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so like, so then kind of I think in preparation for that call, we'll be trying to pull together all the relevant information, examples, et cetera, for that. So it would be a good idea to record that call too, so that for people who cannot join the call, uh, they can view the videos later. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, I think, is there anything else for today? Okay. Well, let's break a few minutes early then. Very good. Thanks all. Looking forward uh, to Thank future uh, conversations here. Thank you. All right. And I assume is, is that Abram from CUS that's also on the, on the call there? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I missed the roll call. Um, no problem. Yeah, so I'm just kind of here because I'm, I'm curious about Sharon. I'm like, so I'm still maintaining, I'm now the only maintainer of Share V2 uh, here at CUS. So I'm curious about the kind of arc and direction of the project in the future. Perfect, perfect. Well, good. Thanks for uh, getting on the call, Ibram. All right. Perfect. Thanks, all. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Talk Bye. To you later.